I think it's wonderful that we are literally sitting on a panel with some of the people who ran these studies um, and published a lot of the data in really high powerful journals. So I am really excited to talk about the specific studies and the data. And Ian, I want you to kick it off because you were the lead in this survey study that helped get it to the FDA approval. Talk about what you found as far as the data and the safety profile. Sure. <clears throat> and um, the so there have been two studies in LGS and two studies in Gervais. Only three of those four have been published so far, and the um, Gervais paper for which I'm the main author is still pending publication. It was actually Dr. Davinsky uh, who uh, got it to the FDA and you know led to the approval. So thankfully, all of those uh, efficacy readouts, number one, were measurable statistically, right? So they were significant, and thankfully they're all relatively consistent with one another. And um, you know the out of the data that's available currently, the rough estimate of efficacy when you look at the primary outcomes, which I'll talk about in one minute, is basically about a 40% reduction in seizures uh, between pre-CBD and post-CBD with all the other medications kept the same. So this, this was an add-on therapy to whatever it is that they were taking, and most of the individuals that were in the LGS and the Gervais study were on two or more medications. They were on appropriate medications, in large part uh, clobazam and, diaz and uh, valproic acid, and the um, primary outcomes were drop seizures for Lennox Gasto and convulsive seizures for Gervais. And what about the LGS studies? Elizabeth, you are one of the main authors in, in the Lancet paper. And what did you guys see in that study? And also our other study with the 1414. Yeah, so I actually, what I was impressed by, so there were, as Ian said, there were two LGS trials and two Gervais trials, one each where there were two arms, placebo and 20 milligrams per kilogram per day. The other studies for both had three arms, placebo, 10, and 20 mg per kg per day. Um, and I was really impressed that all you have disease, different disease populations, the efficacy in all the trials was fairly similar. So 40% and then kind of if you, re, you know, subtract the placebo response, um, but all of the studies still for their primary and for most of the secondary endpoints met statistical significance. Um, so I thought that was pretty impressive. I think the, and as we had discussed earlier, that was very similar to what we saw in the expanded access program that was published and granted open label, um, but the efficacy data there was very similar to what we saw in the RCTs. Um, so I was impressed by the efficacy. I also was very impressed by the tolerability. And I, I agree with Eric. I think if a new product comes out, I think it's gonna be important to know um, kind of not only how effective is it, but if we can already know significant drug-drug interactions when the medication becomes available, that helps us and other physicians use the medication safely. Um, as you know, uh, GW also has conducted a trial in tuberous sclerosis complex, uh, and hopefully we'll have those results soon. And I'm also very interested to see those results because um, that trial used higher doses at 25 and a 50 milligram per kilogram arm, which I think will not only give us more information about um, efficacy, but more, inf more information about tolerability. And we'll be actually in a unique position that when a medication is available, we can see how effective it is over a pretty broad dose range, more than any other meds that have been in clinical trials, um, as well as can we'll be able to assess the tolerability, which again, since in clinical practice, all of us titrate medications, you know, children with medications to where they tolerate to try and optimize efficacy, we'll be in a position where we'll be able to really safely use this medication broadly. And, you know, we talked about the trials and the data, but now, as Elizabeth alluded to, we've had children and adults on cannabidiol or specifically epidiolex for several years. Elaine, can you comment on some of the long-term data that's now starting to come out as it relates to these trials? Yeah, so I think the, the exciting thing is it looks like the, um, the efficacy is, is maintained in many of these children, and I think that's really exciting. Um, we often worry about sort of a, a honeymoon effect with a lot of the medications that we're using for Lennox Gesto or Dravet syndrome or intractable epilepsy, and I think what we've seen is that um, the efficacy is maintained, and I think um, safety-wise, we've not seen any new safety signals as well. It's, it seems to be a very well-tolerated medication. And I think that's going to be very important data as we move on. 